Hello everyone, my name is Alan. Uh, I also have slides, but it's at least that so probably it's not too boring. Um, so the title of my uh, presentation today is China and New Zealand working together to build a sustainable creative ecology, uh, which is quite ambitious and hopefully I can provide some meaningful insights um, in six minutes. Um, so firstly, a bit of background about myself. Um, my own creative practice, as mentioned, uh, lies in um, creating uh, engaging narrative experiences. So I joined Pain as an illustrator and comic artist. I also uh, design, develop uh, video games and interactive, interactive experiences. Um, but last year, I, I stepped into a creative entrepreneurial role um, I, because through founding Chromacon, which is an indie arts festival that celebrates um, New Zealand creatives who produce their own um, original IPs and ideas. And, and after that, I've, you know, I've started Cognico, which is a company that I hope to, you know, to do more um, between New Zealand and China you know, through these creative IPs. Um, but as a, a 1.5 generation uh, Chinese New Zealander, um, I found uh, as an artist, uh, I sometimes I pretty much face the same kind of challenges as uh, both culturally as and artistically, and um, I've never really tried to, I guess, kind of make that defin um, definition between um, a uh, an Asian artist. Um, because I felt that you know I wasn't an Asian, a Chinese artist living in New Zealand. I was a New Zealand artist who had a multicultural background. So, um, so, so I will go through some of the, uh, my views on sort of our creative industry because I feel like it's, all, it's pretty much facing the same kind of challenges as as, as a Chinese New Zealand. Um, so, oh, this is some of my work. I should have went to this slide. Um, but throughout my artistic journey, I've always placed a huge focus on innovation and sustainability. And so while I worked a lot as a freelance artist, um, I was never content with simply being an outsourcer for other people's projects. So over the years, I've, you know, I've uh, self-published art books and comic anthologies with, as part of an art collective. Um, but surprisingly, it's actually quite hard to engage with audiences in New Zealand, um, you know, in, in real life, as opposed to um, you know many around people around the world who access it through through, through the internet, and it seems in some respects there is a distance between New Zealand creatives and the, the wider community. Um, a great example would be the fact that I'm sure you know most New Zealanders would would know um, the, Lord, not the Lord of the Rings franchise, the films. But outside of Sir Peter Jackson and Weta Workshop, um, I think many would find it quite difficult to actually name any of the creatives uh, who, whose imagination actually filled these cinematic experiences. And, and I think that's, that's, that's kind of a problem because you know, a large portion of our um, commercial design, screen, and games industry um, is geared towards being a service provider for others. Um, and I think it's it's quite hard to sustain that model because we you know we develop a dependency on public funding or incentives. Um, but we have so much creativity here. It can you know it's it's artists should really develop a sustainable practice you know based on their own creative visions. So um, from a kind of response to this, and um, there's also platform designed to connect artists with. With wider community through showcase of self-produced, you know, there's uh, illustration, comics, animation, uh, games, and many other forms of visual and interactive storytelling. Um, so the idea really is to promote innovation and sustainability, but the, but there was never, from the outset, any um, any focus on this particular genre or or medium or culture, especially. Um, but funnily enough, there are actually quite a lot of you know, Asian creators who are, you know, who have quite unique voices, you know, being sort of crossed through two cultural backgrounds. 
um, that took that were involved with with this uh, event. So why is it so hard for them to not not just Asian creators, but why is it so hard for museum creators to actually um, develop a sustainable practice for themselves? And that was kind of the question that you know I I wanted to you know really explore. And the first thing for me was I wanted us to explore that internally uh, as a country. So you know for our, our community we must sort of engage with you know our own creators first. Um, so that was a great success. We had 80 creators with 2,000 visitors um, in the span of one day, and we're currently planning the next event um, in April. But Chromecon was uh, was just the beginning. Um, not only did Asian creators have to engage in New um, our work must also be connected to the global industry um, and, and market because it's not enough to be just um, thinking, you know, that, well, we have a great um, environment, so let's just use that as a location backdrop. And if people come here to say do films, then we just provide services for them. And we start building this model of being, you know, a high quality um, outsourcer, but outsourcer nonetheless. So, I feel like when we actually become owners of meaningful brands and original IPs, then New Zealand's creative ecology can truly prosper. Uh, luckily, most visual or interactive content nowadays actually have, um, have access to a wide range of digital platforms, which really breaks down the barriers we've had in the past with traditional models of publishing and content delivery. So what this means is now, we're now in the golden age of independent production, and the real challenge with Kiwi creators is to both develop fresh and innovative ideas and finding the resources to take that first step. And you know, there's plenty of platforms and um, for people to actually get the content out there now. Um, but I think actually taking that first step is actually a, the harder part as opposed to the innovative ideas aspect because I, I feel, you know, like mentioned, previously mentioned today, um, because we're such a small nation, we we become pretty good problem solvers, and I think innovative ideas are not in short supply here in New Zealand. So we're just trying to fit into all of this. Um, we're sitting on the fence between two countries as a 1.5 generation New Zealand Chinese. Um, I I feel like you know over the years I've identified some of our differences, but also a lot of you know areas of synergy and opportunity. So, you know, in China, after years of heavy influence from creative industries, both from the West as well as neighbors like Japan, um, artists and audiences um, have been developing quite a unique voice and taste for creative content. That's distinctively Chinese. Much like learning a new language, this process takes time. And it's, you know, it's easy to make mistakes. And of course, in the past, there's been a bigger focus in China on uh, quantity of production as opposed to quality. So unfortunately, this leads to you know, stereotypes of made in China equating to you know, stereotypes of uh, plagiarism or sustaining quality. Um, but this is rapidly changing, and I think you know it will be a fool to keep focusing on that stereotype um, because you know startup culture, uh, agile development, um, brand value, you know viral outreach, consumer loyalty. You know, these are all these are all concepts quite prevalent in China today. And just like many companies in the West are doing their best to understand China better, um, many in China are also doing their best to understand the global market and, and industry. Chinese market is actually so massive that there's already enough for many to, like in China, to only focus locally. It's, it can't sustain itself you know, as, as a market. Um, what, what this means is for others, they actually face with a different challenge. It's usually the unique nature of politics and industries in China. Um, it can be difficult for independent producers in China to, to, and, and startups to actually make an impact and challenge the big players and disrupt their market with in innovative ideas. Um, but that just certainly doesn't mean you know, these ideas and skilled people don't exist. So not only do they exist, they are actually, you know, many are actually actively trying to do best, best outreach to audiences and consumers worldwide. Um, but and at the same time, here in New Zealand, you know, our industry and market is simply too small to continue re remaining isolated or segregated. 
So the beauty of New Zealand isn't our, the, the natural beauty of New Zealand isn't our only advantage. Our true strength lies in the ingenuity of our creative talent. And I feel our creative ecology needs a bigger and broader focus on long-term sustainability. And China needs more creative freedom and global outreach. Um, it's my genuine belief that if we spend more time developing an understanding of, of each other's culture, then a cultural market and creative needs, then you know, New Zealand and China can truly develop a meaningful, co meaningful future together. So, um, I, I don't know, this, this synergy. So, if there, if there is to be any takeaways from this, um, I think a few key points is um, don't make assumptions. And uh, while we're on the topic of Asian leaders, um, I feel like it's, it's, it has gotten a little bit better. You know, throughout the years, I've gotten responses to um, you know, people telling me they, you know, they want to work with China. So when I say, oh, maybe I can help you with this, or have you thought about this, the response has gone from, um, <laughs> or um, no thanks, I don't want to do it, to um, yes, but uh, then, but the next step is, you know, for example, I'm um, producing a film at the moment, so there are producers who ask, you know, questions such, I ask them, do you know there is, like, if you want to do a co-production feature film, there is, you know, multiple you know, levels of, you know, processes that you go, have to go through, go through, um, even with scripts approval, you know, they're staffed, you have to go through the script approval, and, you know, many don't, don't even know that, so they're not asking the right questions. And for those that do, you know, I, I, I also have been asked questions such as, oh, well, does my script actually, my co-production feature film project script, does it actually have to have, um, you know, Chinese characters? And these are the kind of questions that really shouldn't be asked, but they, they are still being asked, and, you know, that's just an indication um, that, you know, I think there's still a lot of assumptions being made that, you know, currently on how to work with China, and I think for most, most of Probably the main thing is don't make those assumptions. And we really should foster and support our creatives here in New Zealand, um, especially those with original ideas and visions. Um, you know, in those with global thinking. Because if we're able to connect better with Asian creatives, um, then we can really actually you know, develop some meaningful you know, results out of that. Um, and yeah, this is just one interesting thing actually. In the film industry, um, I was just, oh, last weekend, I was at the Big Screen Symposium, um, which is like an industry, um, just a huge discussion panel. And one, one of the panels was on, so what was on uh, Maori films, and what, how do you define that? Um, so, you know, who can make that? And I think the, the, the answers that came out of that was, um, you can make a Maori film if you have the right kind of respect and authenticity. And I don't see in sort of that kind of discussion being made around sort of, you know, how New Zealand and China works together. And I think that's a really good kind of model because um, respect and authenticity, you know, is, is, a, is, is a really good starting point um, instead of, you know, making assumptions and taking, taking things, you know, in one direction only. So yeah, if we, um, as mentioned, if we, work together more closely and build bridges from both sides and as mentioned meet in the middle then um, we can really build a more sustainable future together. Thank you.